Sunday to that day, that we have a following announcements. This mass of day is being offered for the repose of the soul of the Red Cross. Rest in peace to Paul Chekin, whose graveside service will be tomorrow morning. To Dolly Androshek, whose graveside service will be on Wednesday morning. To Joe Gravish, whose funeral mass will be on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And on Thursday, there will be a graveside service for Joe Roman. May they all rest in peace. Changes in the mass schedule for this week is a reminder that Friday is first Friday. We'll have mass at 8 a.m. with exposition of the Blessed Sacrament in the daily mass chapel from 8.30 until noon. Saturday is the first Saturday with the celebration of the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Once again, Mass will be at 8 a.m. and the rosary will be recited on Thursday. <coughs> on Monday evening, November 30th, our seminary in Justin will be here in the church from 6 to 7. The Blessed Sacrament will be on the altar for private prayer only. Uh, so maybe on your way home from work, or maybe immediately after supper, you can stop by the church and just ask the Lord to bless your week. We're praying for your needs and the needs of our parish, the needs of our community, the needs of the world. Our Advent Enrichment Series on the Life of Mary begins this week. We are doing it virtually in light of COVID. It will be online at 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening for you to view at any time, just like our weekend masses. Just check our Facebook page or the web page so that you can find the proper lens. We will be selling pierogies this year for Christmas. The sale date is December 16th, and the times will be announced a little bit later. But just to let you know, we have Christmas pierogies until sell out on December 16th. The Mass book for the 2021 year opens this week. Once again, please consult your bulletin for the dates and the times when our staff will be available to schedule Masses for you. <clears throat> this week's second collection will be for heat and energy. To all of our lectors who have not yet done so, in the sacristy are the new lecture workbooks for this year's cycle. Please stop by before or after Mass to pick up your coffee. We all want to thank those of you who stay a couple of minutes after Masses on Sunday each week to sanitize the views. If you were able, we ask that you could give us five minutes of your time. And lastly, due to the popular demand and the request for the light of COVID Mass, we are going to continue the cemetery mass uh, on Saturday evenings at 4 p.m. as long as we can. We are working on another solution that might even be a little bit 
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we begin the season of Advent, opening our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ into our lives. As the nights of winter grow longer and our days grow short, we look on these earthly signs, light and green branches, and remember God's promise to our world that Christ, our light and our hope, comes among us to conquer the darkness of sin and lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. We pray that just as the light shines from the candles of this wreath, the blessings of Christ will come upon us, brightening our way and guiding us by his truth as we wait for his coming. We praise you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, your Son. Emmanuel, our hope in the heart of night. Upon this reef send down your blessing. Into our hearts let shine your peace and light. Rejoice. Who rouses himself to cling to you. 
For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the part potter. We are all the work of your hands, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial song, song, Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn, turn to you. you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, Lord make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom yourself, you yourself made strong. Lord, Lord make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. Lord, Lord make us, us turn to you. Let, let us see, see your face, and we shall be saved. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account. For the grace of God bestowed on you in Jesus Christ, that he in him you are enriched in every way, without all discord or all knowledge. As a testimony to Christ, we confirm among you, so that you are not lacking in spirited gift. As you had, as you wait, revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will keep you firm to the end, inapproachable, on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, and by him you are called to the fellowship of the Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
opportunity today to enjoy this nice weather. Uh, tomorrow's supposed to be a washout for at least two, three days, so this will be a good one to enjoy. And uh, the new sunshine in our life here at St. Clair of Assisi is our seminary in Justin. Uh, and Justin will talk just very briefly to you after communion today to introduce himself. But uh, Justin, as you know, comes from Vietnam and uh, he came to the United States about two years ago. Uh, he came to seminary for our diocese this past September and he doesn't have a home. So we have become his home. And Justin will uh, be here with us for his vacations and his holidays and his days off from the seminary. So we welcome him very lovingly and affectionately. Uh, this was indeed, as this whole year has been since March 11th, a different year for us. And like it was a lost summer, and a different Easter, and a different Fourth of July, Thanksgiving was no exception. But this Thanksgiving was also very different for me because we could not really socially mingle and get together. I cooked my first turkey this year. <laughs> And uh, I had my nine-year-old uncle, I had my cousin and his daughter and Justin, and uh, we had a very nice dinner. But I must admit, I was a little bit nervous about the turkey. So I called my dear friend Helen Grossman up on the phone. And I said, Helen, how many turkeys have you made in your life? And she said, oh, Father Bill, probably hundreds. I said, well, Helen, I'm making my first turkey. Can you give me some help? Sure, Father. She said, I wish I could come up to the rectory and make it for you, but, you know, I don't want to leave the house. I said, just give me some pointers. <laughs> so she said, what kind of filling are you making for the turkey? And I said, Helen, I'm, I'm really not sure. I said, how do you make yours? And she says, well, she said, Go and get some sausage, some brown sausage, and you brown it up in the pan, and then don't take the sausage fat out. Cook some onions and some celery, okay? And then go and get your bread cubes and get a couple beaten eggs and soak it all together and mix it all up. Put a little bit of poultry seasoning, she said, and a little bit of turkey broth, and you know, that would be great. And I said, I think I could do that. And she says, oh, she said, put in a quarter cup of uncooked popcorn. <laughs> I said, Helen, did I hear you right? A quarter cup of uncooked popcorn. I said, Helen, I said, in my 62 years of life, I have never had turkey stuffing with popcorn in it. And she said, Oh, she says, don't worry about it. I said, well, why don't you put the popcorn in? She says, well, when it pops, the turkey's red and blows off, and then you know the turkey's <laughs> I love you, Helen. <laughs> it has been very different Thanksgiving. I must say it's been enjoyable but not the way I really want to enjoy it. Because I learned to appreciate simpler things and things I took for granted until I did have to get up at five o'clock in the morning and put that turkey in the oven. <laughs> I never really appreciated my mother or what moms have to do to get ready for Thanksgiving. I hate to sound like a whiner, but by the time 4 o'clock came, I was so tired, and all I wanted to do was have my uncle go home, because I wanted to take a nap. But it was invigorating just to appreciate things I've always took for granted. How hard my mom, how hard your mom 
Mother's work on those holidays. And we all enjoy that meal, but we don't necessarily appreciate it. And in that evening, you know, my doctor's been on my case about a lot of things. My blood pressure's a little bit too high. You know, during the initial COVID, I put on too much weight, and he's been trying me to take off weight before I put on the COVID weight, and the weight has to come off. And, you know, I'm at that age now where he's a little bit concerned about my blood sugar. <clears throat> and I just thank God that the sciatic is finally cleared up. So I've begun walking four to five miles almost every day. And on Thanksgiving night, it was such a beautiful night to walk. It was warm. The sky had all kinds of stars in it, which makes you just want to go, ah, you know, that there is a God. Because it was so warm, there were people outside that had fire pits going, so you smell the smoke of the woods. It, <coughs> excuse me. It really was a very sensual experience for me that I was seeing Thanksgiving totally different. But I don't know if I've just been blind to it or if there was something unusual. I know normally around Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, is normally the time for people to put up their Christmas lights and turn on the outside lights. But my family custom is we were not allowed to put the tree up until at least 10 days before Christmas. And as I was walking, all I could see were all these Christmas trees in the houses. Beautifully decorated, beautifully lit up. No, I wasn't a peeping Tom. <laughs> but I saw all these beautiful trees and I saw people putting up their trees and I thought, I don't ever remember seeing a Christmas tree in a house this early. And then I had this thought, maybe because of the way this year has been, we're looking for hope. We're looking for something to brighten our spirits, to brighten our lives. And what brightens our lives more than when we put that Christmas tree up and we light it for the first time. It does sort of make things better and it changes things for us. Hope is something that we really need. Like I said, our lives have been so radically different since March 11th. You know, Justin was all set to go back to the seminary tomorrow. And he got an email yesterday saying that they're going to be closed until after Christmas. So that means he's not going home. He still has to go to class, but, you know, maybe I can put him to work or something. <laughs> but, you know, things are just so, so different and we need hope. Advent is that hope that we need as Catholic Christians. You know, sadly, we live in a society today that is taking Christ out of Christmas. We've secularized it way too much. But if the Christmas tree is something that brings our secular thoughts to a sense of hope, how much more importantly does Advent and Christmas give us a sense of hope as Catholic Christians? as the blessing prayer for the Advent wreath. May it remind us of life and hope. It's different because we have to be separated from each other. We have to wear masks. It's a very confusing time. Certainly it's tough when you can't visit family and friends at the holidays. We're all, I think, maybe worried about what's going to happen within the next two weeks now that Thanksgiving is over. Are we going to see another surge? And, you know, we don't need another surge. And we don't need another surge right now because, you know, back in March and April, we were 
isolated here in Schuylkill County. You know, we got our cases of COVID, but now we're knowing people that have been exposed, either a hot exposure or a cold exposure. We now know people who are sick. We have parishioners who are sick. We have some who are definitely sick and some not so bad. I was so happy to be talking to a parishioner on Wednesday evening before Thanksgiving. It was in the intensive care down at Hershey for the past two weeks. On Wednesday night, I was just calling him to the hospital because he's in isolation to give him some hope. And he said, guess what? He says, my wife and I are in the car. We're driving home to Thanksgiving. It's touching our lives. But why should we let a virus touch our lives the way it is? Can't we let Jesus touch our lives? Can we let Jesus be our hope? Can we let Jesus be our life? I'm afraid, but then sometimes I look at life with the glass half empty rather than half full. But I would imagine that maybe our Christmas is not going to be any better than Thanksgiving. A lot of my usual routine about being with family and friends and exchanging gifts might not necessarily be the way that I'm accustomed to. But I do believe, just like that walk I took on Thanksgiving night, God is with us. And God in tune my senses to things that I never saw before. Sometimes we're too caught up in the turkey and the decorating and the baking of cookies and the wrapping of presents and the exchange and the parties that even though we didn't intend to, we took Christ out of Christmas. So as we prepare now for this, and we truly be open to the gift of Christ who enters our life in a very special way. I believe in one God, Father and one mighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God from God, light of light, to God of true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not have an end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess upon baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Advent begins, we hear our Lord challenging us to be alert and ready for Him. The prayers we offer for others express a faith that is attentive and alive. That the Holy Catholic Church may be united in fidelity to the Pope and bishops. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That politicians may act with integrity and keep God's ways in mind. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That the people distracted by worldly pleasures may return to the saving grace of the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That each one of us gathered here may. Seek 
pardon and peace in the sacrament of penance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That mercy and love may be, um, may be perfect through those who have died, especially for James Prosper, who this Mass is being offered for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, loving Father, as we prepare for the return of your Son by hearing his word and offering his sacrifice. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gave it to his disciples. 
I will say, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank you. 
for those afraid and grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn an evil disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Justin. Um, and as I said, I have uh, been here to the U.S. for uh, uh, for more than two years. Uh, when I first came here, I was in Michigan. And James, uh, who is here in the summer, uh, is my friend back in Michigan. And after this summer, uh, it, um, this summer I came to uh, uh, Pennsylvania. And it's uh, such a blessing that uh, the bishop accepted me as a seminarian of the Diocese of Anatown. Um, thank, uh, thanks be to God for that. And uh, I'm, uh, uh, it's very nice to uh, know all the people here. Now, uh, St. Clair is my whole parish. So, uh, this Thanksgiving, I uh, had uh, the first turkey in Pennsylvania uh, made by uh, Father Bill. It's also the first turkey he ever made. So, uh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Lucky in <laughs> <laughs> uh, So now, uh, um, James and I are in the same class. Uh, it's like uh, the pre theology one in uh, St. Charles Borobio Seminary. Um, and uh, I cannot thank you enough for welcoming me to the parish. And uh, uh, please pray for me, pray for my discernment to. Priesthood and uh, especially pray for my English. <laughs> I'm learning. So, uh, very nice to meet uh, all of you guys, and uh, um, I hope uh, you enjoy your, uh, the rest of your holiday. Uh, thank you. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid casting things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures in Christ's Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen.